Hi everybody, welcome to Self Quest. I'm Spence. So you may have noticed I've taken a bit more breaks in between the last few weeks for the holiday season. I needed to do that for my own health and well-being. And I hope you've been taking a little bit of time, a little extra time for yourselves as well. But I want to let you know I'll be back to doing your weekly readings very soon after the holiday season. So thank you so much for coming by. I hope you enjoy these readings. And I want to wish you very, very Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to all of you that celebrate anything else. Hi Taurus! Alright, today we're using the Enchanted Map Oracle by Colette Baron reed with the artwork of Jenna Della Grittalia and the Lightseer's Tarot by Chris Ann. Gorgeous decks. I hope you enjoy them very much. Alright, so I'm going to start shuffling for you. I have pre-shuffled, but I'm going to do a little bit more for you here on camera. Alright, Enchanted Map Oracle for you Taurus. Let me pull your card, by the way. There we go. Taurus. I hope you had a nice Thanksgiving time. I hope that you are coming into the holiday season happy and prepared to enjoy it with family or friends or however you do. Um, and if you don't celebrate Christmas, then anything else that you are celebrating right now in life, I wish you the best. All right, Taurus, let's see. If for you today, an enchanted map oracle card. This spans through the next couple of weeks, through the holiday season, although I will be bringing you another reading before the end of the year. I definitely want to uh, make you aware, like I did in the intro, that I will be bringing you uh, your weekly 12, you know, zodiac sign readings again after the holidays, okay? Just need some time to uh, embrace and have reverence for the holidays. All right, today, Taurus, you get flying. I love this. Flying. Beautiful. This is about rising above things, seeing the patterns for what they are, getting a broader perspective, taking it all in, Taurus. I love that for you. With a Gemini full moon, um, that is for your second house of finances. It is going to happen on yeah, the 18th most places in the U.S. and on the 19th, other places in the world, so you can look up your time zone and when that will be for you, the full moon in Gemini. We are in Sagittarius season, so in the season that we're in, the full moons are always in their opposite axis sign. So in Sagittarius season, the opposite axis full moon is Gemini, all right? And of course, Gemini and Sagittarius both are about learning, big time, right? Um, Gemini is the practical mind, the Mercury mind, right? Fleet-footed, winged messenger, sharing information, learning quickly, coming in to understand. So the way we think and the way we communicate, right? And then Sagittarius, the higher mind, ruled by Jupiter. All that we know, all that we've learned, all that we've collected as far as all knowledge so far in the library of life, right? The Akashic Records. That holds all the knowledge of history, known history, and even unknown history. All right, in the quantum field, right? It's big. So with the Gemini full moon, we've spent the last 18 months or so with the north node in Gemini, which is helping us all to learn at a rather rapid rate, certainly. And this year in 2021, we've gone through three Saturn Uranus squares. Saturn, old hat, versus Uranus new innovation, and the amalgam of both. That's why 2021 has felt like such a year of growing pains for so many, because it's been hard to adjust to change, isn't it? All right, and right now we are coming, that same day, by the way, the full moon day, which would be the 18th, uh, coming into the 19th, right? I think it's like 11.35 Eastern time, New York time. Um, so right before midnight, and then the 19th otherwise, during that time, we also have Venus still in the sky and very powerful, turning retrograde, which is a time of review for all the things that you love and value, right? Not a time, by the way, to do any plastic surgeries, get any tattoos, or do any drastic hairstyle or other style changes because after Venus retrograde is over, you may go, what was I thinking, right? I know. All right, Taurus. Well, you're not really usually one to make radical changes. 
Let's see. All right. Got your cards. I'll lay them out for you. I'm going to show you every single card today. I'm going to read horizontally, vertically, and big picture, as well as look at the bottom of the deck for some insight into the subconscious things that maybe you've been working through. And the nine cards, and the nine card spread, helps us sort of talk through and walk through that stuff that's been going on internally for you. Then, of course, I use the oracle card as sort of an overarching energy that's happening outside of you in your life. The macro and the micro inside, right? The, the very personal and then the very objective, what's going on, right? It's kind of my process. All right, Taurus, if you just sit with me and settle in, take three deep cleansing breaths. Let's get some oxygen in there. Lowers the cortisol, brings down the stress, helps us to relax. Mm, okay. Taurus, I think you're doing some deep inner work. I know the full moon in Gemini being in your second house, the second house isn't of just finances and your work a day and your earned income. We do value income, we value money because we need it for everything, right? But so much more importantly than that is our self-value, how we value others, what in life feels like love to us, what feels like comfort and joy and pleasantness and pleasure. Venus brings the good things in life. And when we go into retrograde, it's time for review. And when it's right next to Pluto, Pluto is about transformation. So it's going to stick whatever changes you're making right now. So evaluating what you care about matters right now. And in Gemini, with a full moon in Gemini, this is a big moment of enlightenment about what you've been learning in the last year and a half, couple years. Right? What we've all been learning, humanity, about the brotherhood of man loving and being loved, inclusivity rather than exclusivity, right? Connection rather than separation. The old way that can never be changed and how about the new way where we have some of the old way but we also move to the new way and we find the amalgam of both. All that's been going on. That's what's happening right right now. And in January the nodes of the moon are moving from Gemini Sagittarius to Taurus, right? Taurus Scorpio. So that's going to be big for you. This is a big time for you. It is for all of us. I see you're doing a lot of inner work. Seven of Wands, bottom of the deck. There has been a moment where you've had to sort of resist what it is that is not working for you. Seven of Swords. And because this is internal and subconscious, when I see the Seven of Swords in a subconscious internal way, then this is about the way that you've been thinking that's been blocking you and keeping you in confusion about what choices you need to make about what you value. So Taurus, you're asking yourself big questions here. Have I been in denial? Have I been blocking and denying what it is that I want in my life? The choices I want to make. Am I able to allow myself to make choices or am I stealing from myself my own choices because nothing can touch me. I'm just going to stay in this bubble where nothing can touch me for fear. So perhaps asking yourself some pretty, pretty deep questions. I mean, look at these cards, right? It's like she's got all these wands coming at her. And she's like at peace in the bubble. It's like, I'm staying safe. I'm staying zen. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. But are you lying to yourself that you're fine? Are you really wanting to escape this state? Or are you, are you lying to yourself that you're in this state when really kind of in a state of flux? What are you saying to yourself? Or are you saying, I need this? I gotta come out of confusion and choose what I stand for when people come against me with their opinions or these options that I'm not interested in and I say, no thank you, 
I'm fine. What is it that's sort of stealing your Zen? Because it's resistance. You're resisting it. You're resisting change, perhaps, or maybe you're resisting a change of mindset. I don't know that your mind knows what your heart wants with these two picture pictures. But you're trying to figure it out because he's going toward this, all these choices. I don't think you can deny it. I don't think you can, if you look at her, this is the way she comes. She's not looking at that. She's not looking. So it's like you're not facing what it is that you're trying to deny about where you want to go, what you want to do, what choices you are making, Taurus. That's what I'm seeing under the deck, okay? So if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but let's get a better perspective. Flying, and see what this is for you. Taurus, number 20, flying. This feels like a personal reading, but of course there are many of you Taurians going through many different things. Again, messages are meant uh, to appeal to the Taurus family in the way that it does, which is why these kinds of general readings on YouTube feel very, very differently than a personal reading would feel. Um, and for readers, we're reading for the whole house. So I, I, when I always picture a wedge of the zodiac and just thousands and thousands of faces, and then I just imagine and see the word Taurus, Taurus, and I focus on it and pray for the blessing to come through for the message that could possibly help and bless your life with encouragement or a moment of enlightenment or inspiration for you to keep going and keep trying, right? But this feels personal and I feel like I'm talking to someone personally, but I'm, I'm not. I'm only, I think I'm just feeling you, Taurus. <laughs> That's my point. All right, number 20, flying. You have the power to see things from a higher perspective. If you were a bird flying high in the air, what would you see? When you soar above life's challenges and opportunities, a new perspective becomes available. Today you have invisible wings that allow you to swiftly bring your circumstances into alignment with your highest purpose. This is a sign that your waiting is over, that all your hard work has paid off, and the things you hoped for are no longer beyond your scope. You have the ability to reach for the stars and find one with your name on it. Spread your wings and soar. The angels are waiting for you. You're being helped through this. There's still work to be done. So be patient. If it feels out of your reach, it will not be out of your reach forever. So I think one of the reasons that we have to really, you know, I imagine when I'm really confused and when I'm in this state, okay, I have to tell you one of the things that I do, the first thing I say to myself is I'm not going to block what's coming in for me, my understanding, and I'm not going to deny it, okay, I'm not going to go into that denial mode where I'm staying in my own bubble and, you know, I don't let in what I know my feelings are trying to tell me. So I go into my feelings and I try to allow them. And sometimes it sucks. I'm not, saying, <laughs> I'm not saying it's easy. It's not. But if I get to the point where I'm just confused emotionally or overwhelmed, which I'm getting a sense of overwhelm, I imagine myself as I am. And then I pull off planet and I see myself smaller and smaller as a tiny little dot on the map until the map becomes the globe and I am in space trying to understand, well, how big of a deal is this? How much does this matter to my life right now? If I took a higher perspective, or even if I stepped outside of myself and watched my life as a movie, how would I see myself and what I'm doing and how I'm feeling and thinking? So how important is what you're going through how important is it to the span of the rest of your life, right? If it's just drama, it's going to end. And you'll get a higher perspective and rise above it. But if it's something you're stuck in, you need to get the higher perspective so that you understand you have opportunities and potentialities that are there for you. So why 
are you perhaps denying it? All right, let's go through the top, the, across the top. And by the way, stay with me. <laughs> if you click off now, then maybe you're not ready, but hopefully you'll stay with me, okay? Let's, we're gonna do a horizontal, vertical, big picture, okay? Okay, Page of Wands, King of Cups, and the Wheel. There is change coming, and I do believe that this is this time right now through the end of the year, the end of the, the wheel, the clock, the year. That's how I'm seeing this. So the Page of Wands is a burst of, of enthusiasm, or at least an initiation. It's when we say, you know what, I'm going to do it. I'm going to go for it, or I'm going to pick up the phone. It can be a message coming in, and it's usually good news, right? Because it's spirit fire. It's something that gets you going, all right? It's the spark that lights something. And I think what it is is an emotional awakening. It's like your spirit is saying, hey, look, sit with me, breathe, feel. Stop it. Stop the just don't think about your grocery list or your to-do list tomorrow. Stop denying what you're feeling. Can't stay in this bubble. You gotta you gotta come down to earth. Because I've got something exciting to tell you. You're growing and changing. Our spirit does this, it knocks on the door, doesn't it? And we have to listen. You feel the change. There's no way you can't, that you don't feel this change is happening for you emotionally. That's, I'm really seeing that. There's just like, there's no denying it when it's this strong. Sagittarius season is fire. And this is a spark. It's the spark you need to get into the place of emotional peace control, maturity, allowing all of your emotions, not being afraid of any of them, owning them, and taking responsibility for everything you feel because only then when we tell ourselves the truth, right, only then can we make choices about what we really want and value. Next line, Seven Pentacles, you put a lot of effort into whatever this is about for you and I have a feeling it has to do with a relationship from the past with this next card, which is the Six of Cups in the center of the reading today, and the Tower. So when you're looking back at your memories about whatever this is about that's very emotional for you, that you've been, maybe, you haven't been able to go there, I think, emotionally, because maybe you were just really disappointed, or maybe you were really hurt, or maybe you were disappointed in yourself. Whatever it is, you know, ho'oponomopono, right? Forgive yourself. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. Right? The ho'oponopono prayer, it's so meaningful. We're praying to God, but not, we're not asking for forgiveness necessarily. We're, we're asking ourselves to forgive ourselves. Because no matter what we've been through, we needed to be through for whatever reason. It's like you kind of signed up for it when you came to Earth as a human. You're assessing things, evaluating things, Seven of Pentacles, about the past when you had really good memories of something. And maybe some of those memories were not as good as you thought they were. Maybe you... Maybe you have either been just staying in the bubble where nothing touches you, or you tell yourself it was all bad, or you, you tell yourself, well, it was all good. Maybe, Taurus, this is about owning one's own light and shadow and the light and shadow of others. That when I look at this, I'm, I'm seeing facade. If there was a facade about the relationship, about a person, about yourself, that's okay. We all wear them. We all need to. It's like if you go to a job interview, you put on your professional facade. And you sit there and you interview, right, professionally. So we all have these 
I don't know, personality habits that we, that we play out and repeat and, you know, in our temperament, in our personality. And as we grow and learn, you know, we reevaluate. Wait, you know, why did I say that? That's not, that's not a, a, a proper representation of me, right? I just was trying to impress someone, right? And then you realize, wait, no, that in, in some way, that really made me feel like I've betrayed myself. Because, you know, I want to represent myself well. I see a lot of identity stuff here, Taurus. And I think that that's a good thing. It means you're growing. It means you're getting in touch with your emotions. Okay, so then, Ten of Swords, you've changed your mindset. The Ten of Swords is when we've gone all the way through the sword suit. Man, we've lived, we've loved, we've lost, we've been through it all, and we have learned. And that frees us. The truth shall set you free, ten of swords. Not in denial, not lying to yourself about everything that's been going on or the confusion that you've seen because you've been oblivious or not wanting to look at it. Or you just always forgive and move on and pretend it didn't happen and that's not working because there's no result, you know, nothing's resolved. Whatever this Ten of Swords has been for you, it's been difficult. But then the Page of Swords, you've learned something new. This is new information coming in. And maybe it's been something you've struggled with. Wow, maybe I need to rethink what I believed about that because maybe if I see it in a, a different way, a new way, and learn to consider it in a different way, then, you know, I'll feel differently about it and have different choices because I, I won't be in, in resistance to it. I can stay me and let others be them. Live and let live. Ten of Swords, Page of Swords. You're going to get the information that you need. Whatever you're struggling with, you've, you needed to learn something about it. You needed to learn how to let go, Ten of Swords. Let go of one way of thinking that was negative and what not working for you to learn a new way that helps you to deal with stuff that comes up in life, disagreements, right? People deferring and disagreeing with you, whatever, without letting it, you know, be so destructive. Right? So let's go down the vertical because, you know, this is really about you getting a, a broader perspective, putting yourself in other people's shoes, trying to empathize with other people's feelings, and figuring out, wow, I've really learned something about others and myself. Because when I learn about other people and I broaden my perspective on humanity itself, then I broaden the perspective on my own humanity. When we stop judging everybody else, we stop judging ourselves. When we stop judging ourselves, we stop judging everybody else, right? So this is kind of comparison is kind of the thief of joy. And now you can choose differently. I just, I don't know, comparison is the thief of joy. Hmm. All right. So looking at these verticals, big picture, flying, I just want to say, you know, what I'm getting for you, Taurus, I think this is a really big message, but I think, I think this is, okay. All right, page, okay, so page of wands, seven of pentacles. This is an injection of energy. It's either an inspiration or an initiation or excitement about something. And it can be a message, but when it's, you know, the seven of pentacles is so much about assessment. So when you're really assessing things, it's like, Maybe this Ten of Swords coming to a new mindset and realizing, you know, I gotta, I gotta get less intense about this. I gotta let myself have more fun. I gotta stop thinking so seriously about it. 
and give myself a break, a new dawn, a new vista. Allow for new energy to come in, right? That's cleansing and clearing. It's like we don't want to keep it underground anymore. We want to, we want to air it out. We want to air it out. Do you see what I'm saying? Air it out of yourself. King of Cups, because you're really trying to make peace with the past and see it in a new light, right? Making peace with the past and seeing, seeing things in a new light. Maybe, you know, being perfect is not the point. And so you don't, you don't have to have the perfect memories of a perfect past where you acted perfectly and did the perfect and right thing every time. And, you know, you're always perfectly emotionally in control. Nobody is. That's not real, right? And you realize, okay, wait a minute. What Was I judging my own feelings? So therefore, you know, in the past, it's just taken me a really long time to realize how important they are when normally I would shelf them or the vice versa, right? Whatever experience you're having, you're having a mindset change. And then, yeah, the Wheel of Fortune, it's this is meant to be at this time. Whatever changes you're going through, it, it, is, it is astrological, it is in divine timing, and, you know, these patterns come around again so that we get it, no matter how, how many times it takes, until we really get it. And what I mean by that, you know, get it. The tower, oh my gosh, aha, what I believed. Well, I... I can't see it that way anymore because now I have new information and now I've learned a new way of looking at something because this way staying in a tower that's built on a false foundation I'm in constant struggle with myself and everyone else and that's what maybe you're changing so perhaps this is really an emotional breakthrough for you a catharsis a true personal renaissance and I don't think you're going to be able to see things the same way anymore because Taurus you've been you've been asking yourself for a while with the three sevens sevens the God number three sevens you know what's changing for me Sevens are when we, in, the, in numerology, sevens are when we stop and we assess what we're going to do differently. Three sevens. Three, the number of creation. When you get three sevens, to me that's just like really allowing for a change. Allowing it with a child's mind and enthusiasm. Because it will, it will, Taurus, bring you peace and healing. It can heal the past. It can break down the barriers and bring about a great change in your life. Right? And all the conflicts that you've had with people, with work, or whatever your issues have been, as far as the things in your life that you want to change, the things in your life you know, that will bring better results when you change that mindset and free your mind and allow it to learn some things that just may really surprise you. And yeah, at first, it, you may struggle to get it. You, and you, and you may even struggle with your identity about where you fit in all of it. But that's the tower. That's what's changing is you. And what, it's, it's emotional. Maybe you, you were always told you had to do things in a certain way. That's the only way to do them. That's what you know to do. And if somebody's asking you to do something different, an alternate plan, an alternate thing, you're like, it confuses you and it overwhelms you because you know how to do what you know how to do. But won't it be interesting, Taurus, to learn how to do what you're about to know how to do? <laughs> Because it's going to be new. <laughs> all right, Taurus, I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. Very happy holidays to all of you. I pray that you are well. I hope you enjoy it with your 
family and your friends, whomever it is that is in your life that you love. And if you're alone, I hope you will love and care for yourself with great reverence that you are alive and breathing and tomorrow is another day. So I wish you kindness, reverence, and gratitude. And I'll be back to talk to you soon. Thank you, Taurus.